ES Audio. Hi, I'm Rochelle Travers, and this is the Evening Standards Tech and Science Daily. Coming up, plans for a 100% electric flying ferry are unveiled. But first... Today is Jupiter's closest encounter with Earth in 70 years. Over the past few days, the largest planet in our solar system has become increasingly visible shortly after sunset. During opposition, Jupiter will appear at its largest and brightest and will remain above the horizon for much of the night. So keep a lookout from sunset onwards this evening. Opposition is when Earth passes directly between the Sun and an outer planet, placing the outer planet on the opposite side of the Sun. An opposition with Jupiter takes place roughly every 13 months, but this is likely the closest we will be to the gas giant in decades, so it may very well be a -a once-in-a-lifetime event. Design plans for a 100% electric flying ferry have been unveiled. So this is the world's first zero-emissions ferry that's going to be able to uh, fly passengers all around the world from into work in a commuter sense. That's Dr Ian Percy, Artemis Technologies' CEO. The EF-24 passenger vessel uses cutting-edge hydrofoil technology to lift the craft out of water, enabling it to sail above the waves. The company says it's a game-changer for the global high-speed ferry market. Just huge advantages in terms of cost for the operator, for the passenger, comfort, weight, pollution. Um, So really a radical new technology. Raising the hull above the water dramatically cuts drag, delivering estimated fuel cost savings of up to 85%, compared to conventional diesel-powered ferries. In other electric vehicle news, the cost of charging an electric car has surged by 42% in just four months, meaning it's nearing the same price as petrol. According to the RAC, the average price for using the chargers has increased by 18.75p per kilowatt hour since May reaching 63.29 per kilowatt hour. The latest figures show a driver exclusively using rapid or ultra-rapid public chargers pays around 18p per mile for electricity, compared with roughly 19p per mile for petrol and 21p per mile for diesel. The rise has been blamed on the soaring wholesale costs of gas and electricity. An anchor has been discovered during offshore wind farm work, which may date back to Roman times. We haven't got a confirmed date yet, but typologically, Everything points to it being uh, a find from the Roman Imperial period. That's Brandon Mason from Maritime Archaeology Limited, speaking about the discovery in a clip from Scottish Power. So this is, we believe, almost 2,000 years old. There is actually only three pre-Viking anchors known from Northern European waters. And this is the oldest and largest, we think. The 100 kilogram raw iron anchor is more than two meters long and took two years to get out of the water. If dated to the time of the Roman occupation of Britain, they said it's most likely to have come from one of the larger merchant ships of the Roman fleet. It's hard to overstate the significance of this find. Analysis to confirm the age of the anchor is ongoing. The UK Space Agency has awarded a group of international companies based in the UK a £2.2 million contract to clean up space junk. As part of its clear mission, they'll aim to remove two disused UK-owned satellites from Earth's orbit that have been inactive for more than a decade. Currently, they have potential to remain in orbit for up to 100 years before atmospheric drag would cause the objects to naturally re-enter the atmosphere and burn up. They say by removing them, the UK is sending a strong message to the world regarding its commitment to address the space debris issue and lead by example in reducing orbital congestion. Let's go to the ads. Coming up, why we're being encouraged to flood our gardens and Elon Musk faces some tough questions from Twitter. Whilst you're here, why not give us a rate and follow? Welcome back. Experts say a method of preserving donated kidneys could mean fewer organs are wasted. The technique being used by Kidney Research UK is called normothermic perfusion. This is when oxygenated blood is pumped through a kidney to simulate the flow of blood within an organ. Cold storage of the kidney is currently the standard method, but the longer the organ is on ice, the greater the chances of damaging it. The new approach could offer a solution to storage that does not impact the viability of the organ. Elon Musk is set to answer Twitter's questions under oath in the next few days. 
The deposition comes ahead of an October trial that will determine if the multi-billionaire must carry through with his bid to buy the social media company for $44 billion. It's been planned for today and tomorrow, but could potentially extend to Wednesday the 28th of September if necessary, according to reports. And finally, some experts are suggesting an unusual method to combat drought and sewage in waterways. They're saying to flood our gardens to create bogs. It's claimed that water companies are considering catching water in gardens as part of efforts to stop sewage overflows being triggered. Tony Juniper, a campaigner, writer and well-known environmentalist, told the Gathering Festival in Norfolk that creating bog gardens could also help reverse biodiversity loss with the widespread elimination of Britain's natural wetlands through farming and construction blamed in part for large reductions in certain wildlife populations. You're up to date. Come back at 4pm for the Leader podcast from the Evening Standard here in London. We'll be back tomorrow at 1pm. See you then.